Hi, this is Chris Rubio of Rubio Long Snappy, and I'm here with a fantastic interview of Carson Tinker. Tinker, what's going on, man? What's up, dude? I'm putting some socks on. My bad. <laughs> no worries, man. You get you get your feet nice and toasty. Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Dude, thanks for having me. I've really been looking forward to this. Not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. Okay, so we we we're gonna do this interview a little bit different. I'm gonna break it into parts. We're gonna do three parts. We're going to do personal questions. I'm looking at my little list right here. Personal questions, Alabama questions, and then just basic football questions. Perfect, man. Okay, because so we, what we did is, you know, I've been on social media. I've been letting kids know and parents know, okay, I'm going to be interviewing Tinker. Give me some questions. So I got a list of about 30 questions here, okay? So we're going to start with personal. Number one, how's it being married? <laughs> being married is awesome, man. I mean, she's, she's my wife is my best friend, and uh, she's actually 30... 38 weeks pregnant right now, so, and uh, here in a couple of weeks, we're about to have a son, so, uh, yeah, it's super exciting, getting married, getting married is awesome, and I know I'm talking to a bunch of high school kids, <laughs> I think that, but then when you get old, you'll, you'll realize that being married is actually really cool. I understand that, I understand that, now, you led into my next question, are you nervous about a kid coming, man, you're going to have a boy, do you have a name picked out? Oh, uh, yeah, he's going to be a junior, and we're going to call him Hootie, <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually in the nursery right now, so. All right, give us a little tour. I won't show you all of it, but uh, got a little basketball going there. That's the crib. Nice. Hootie. Yeah, I, it, it's not all the way dumb. My wife would be really mad if I showed you the rest of the room. <laughs> Don't worry. Only about a billion people will see it. Yeah, we're we're, uh, we're still taking pictures and hanging pictures. So, uh, yeah, any day now, we should uh, we should have it done. So. Okay, now, how did, what's, what's with the Hootie? How's that come about? Uh, I don't know, man. I just I always thought it was a cool name. Like, I grew up listening to Hootie and the Blowfish. And, gotcha. You know, Everybody named Hootie, but I always thought it was a great name, and uh, my wife really liked it. And I mean, there's really no no reason. Uh, we just we just thought it was really cool. So all right, I got you. All right, so th this this question came from someone who's seen you out. They, they Tinker, please tell us about your fashion set. We've been you you've had some nifty shoes, and some blazers. <laughs> I wonder who came up with that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I don't have a fashion sense. I don't have a fashion. I usually just wear what I think is comfortable or uh, what I think is cool looking, man. I find a lot of stuff in like uh, thrift stores and antique stores that uh, I don't know. I end up I end up wearing probably more often than I should. So. <laughs> okay. If you had to go back high school through the NFL, what is one thing you might change on or off the field? Um. Told you these are going to be good questions. I don't know, man. I think uh, I don't regret anything. You know, I've I've been I was thinking about that uh, a couple of days ago. I mean, I've been really fortunate and really blessed. Uh, I can't think of anything that I would change. I might try to eat a little healthier. I do that now, and I, I'm starting to realize now how big of a difference it makes when you know you eat you know your vegetables and stuff. I grew up and I never ate anything green. Um, I wish. Uh, Maybe I wish I'd have ate healthier, but I mean, nothing serious, you know? Fantastic. Yeah, you, cause it, it's one of those things, though, too. Like, once you, if you go back and change one thing, the whole butterfly effect could, you know. No, I mean, I've had a great life, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. No, I, I, I know you have. Next question. Where did you meet your wife, and how did you propose? Uh, so we met in college. Uh, we actually met at a bar through some friends. Uh, met there. She stood me up for a few weeks, and then finally my my charm, you know, <laughs> back in. But uh, <laughs> no, I was I was not on her radar at all when we first met. Uh, but uh, yeah, we met, and we've been married. We've been married uh, a little over three years now. Okay. And how did you propose? Uh, so I was in Jacksonville, and she was in San Diego. Uh, I'd been in the league. I played three games in the NFL. And um, she came into town for my third game because the first two games were away. Or I, I can't remember exactly, but she was in town for a game and uh, bought a ring here in Jacksonville because I wanted to propose, you know, before I got into the NFL, but I didn't have any money. Um, so I, I bought a ring, uh, you know, after I, after I had a pretty good paying job and uh, proposed down here. We lived uh, at my buddy's beach house, actually. One of my buddies from college lived at his beach house. And... Um, did it right there on the beach. Were you nervous? Oh man, I was so nervous. <laughs> I mean, every emotion. I think. I mean, I was happy. I was nervous. 
Uh, I mean, just it, it was a crazy feeling. I got you. I got you. Um, is it true? This is number six question. Is it true you drove from Jacksonville to Vegas last year? If so, what was that like? Yeah, so Vegas was kind of like – so I love going to Vegas, uh, but I can only go in January because that's usually our off season, uh, unless we make, you know, the playoffs. Um, so that's kind of the start of our vacation, you know, kicking off in Vegas. So last year, uh, my wife and I, we drove to Houston and saw her family for a little bit and then picked up a uh, camper trailer in Austin and drove from Austin to um, – Roswell, New Mexico, where the UFO landed. Got it. Went to like the UFO museum and then uh, kept driving and we stopped in, uh, I can't remember, somewhere short of Vegas and then we pulled into Vegas. Uh, yeah, but it was a blast, man, driving. And then we ended up going to Utah, uh, Colorado, Arizona, and uh, yeah, then back down through Arizona. So it was awesome, man. A good time. Would you do it again? Dude, we're gonna do it next off season, man. We love doing that. Fantastic. That's good. It's good. It's good when you can have someone you can travel with. It's fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Makes it a lot easier. All right. If if you could be sponsored by something, what would it be? Uh sponsored by something. No clue, man. Oh, I already stumped you. That's good. Yeah. Uh I mean, because I got like a like a very small uh Nike deal, mm -hmm. and I mean I don't I don't even use that really. So I mean, I'll, and I don't know, man. I don't know what I I don't know what I would use. I guess a truck. I need a new truck. Ford <laughs> okay, shout out to anyone that wants to help Tinker get a new truck. Yeah. Okay, what's the best restaurant you've ever been to? Best restaurant. Um, that's a good question. Uh, we try to go to uh, every away city we play in. We try to go to like their signature steakhouse. Mm -hmm. so I've been I've I've been to some really good restaurants. Um, there's a place called Burns in Tampa. Uh, I remember you telling me about it. I'd say hands down that is that is it though. Does it have um, air conditioning? It has air conditioning. All right, then I'll go. No, it's a. Uh, I mean, you look it up. It's it it it's unreal, man. It's 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 the best meal I've ever had. Okay. What's your favorite food? Uh, I think I've kind of learned to appreciate a lot of food. I mean, I'd love to say like Chick Fil A, but. Uh, I mean, the older I get, my, my palate has grown, and of course. I like, you know, I, I mean, and being in Jacksonville, I like eating seafood now, you know. Gotcha. Uh, I'd probably say, I don't know, good steak. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I, I like seafood a lot, but I, I feel like I don't get enough food when I order seafood. Yeah, like, I feel you. And crab, way too much work. Scallops, you only get like a five of them. I need like twenty. Yeah, I like getting like a surf and turf. You know, get a little bit of both. Yeah. They should, they should have restaurants where you could, like, buy by the pound. Seafood? Yeah. They do down here in Jacksonville, man. Well, I, but, I, but I, I want oh. more. <laughs> I got you. What's your favorite candy bar? Oh, uh, candy bar. Mm. I'm not a big candy bar guy. I'd probably say, like, Butterfinger, maybe. Yeah, it gets stuck in your teeth. I don't like that one. I'm more of, like, a uh, like a sugar guy. Like, I love, like, Sour Patch Kids. Ah. Yeah, that's that's my go-to one at Candy Bar. Gotcha. What's your favorite movie? Um, I'd have to give you like a top three, man. I'd have to go top four because I just saw Dunkirk and that movie's unreal, man. Okay, so top four are these in order, or you're just giving me four? Oh, no, four. I'd say Dunkirk, Gladiator, Anchorman, Dazed and Confused. Got it. All good ones. Dazed and Confused soundtrack phenomenal. Oh, great soundtrack, man. Two discs. Have, have I seen what? Dunkirk. I have not. Dude, you got to go see Dunkirk. All right. Is it in the movie theater right now? Uh, have, you, have you not heard of Dunkirk? I, I, I don't. I have young kids. I don't go to the movies. Dude. Did you like Saving Private Ryan? Loved it. So it's like, it's better than Saving Private Ryan, dude. Okay. I'll check it out. Dude, when uh, the English came over the channel and picked up all the, all the soldiers. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll check it out. Tom Zimmer and Christopher Nolan, man. Okay. Last personal question. What's the biggest celebrity you've ever met? Uh, well, I've met Obama twice. Oh, yeah. From Alabama. Do uh, what now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, from being in Alabama. Went to the White House twice. Awesome. Um, I actually did an uh, internship 
and I don't want to get political, but I did an internship with Senator Sessions, who's the attorney general now. And he, he's a great guy. I love him. Uh, I did an internship with him, and I got that through school. Um, but then, I mean, I've met so many players, you know, playing right. ball. Okay, perfect. All right, now we, we touched on Alabama. You were there. You got a full scholarship from Nick Saban after a while, and everyone hears all about him. What question I have from you from someone in, I think it's actually Alabama. What's your best memory of Alabama? My my best memory, mm -hmm. like my favorite memory. Sure. Oh, uh, I mean, I went. I was. We went three championships. So I mean, that was awesome. Um, but I would say my favorite memory is uh, probably my senior year. That was probably the coolest one um, because I was on like the uh, like the leadership council, and I mean, I remember. I don't know. I felt like there was a lot more odds against us that year, and we overcame a lot, and. Uh, just sitting in the locker room after the game, just, I mean, it was just a sense of accomplishment was, well, it was one of the best feelings. When that, when you finished your, your senior year with the national championship and you were done and you n knew you were going to go to the next level, you pretty much had a good thought about it. Were you, say it again? But I did not know that. But, I, okay. I, 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 I did. I knew, I knew I had the talent, but it is. And, and that's something you'll see every year. It is very hard to get into the NFL. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, and I didn't think that the numbers would work out. We'll get to that in a minute, though. Yeah. When you were done and you were over uh, at Alabama and you guys won the national championship, was it – give me the emotions you had. Was it like relief? Was it – were you exhausted mentally? Because I remember when I was at UCLA, when the season was over – that you're so much, you know, September, October, November, December, football, 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 football. When it's over, it's kind of like, oh, it almost, you know, and you guys are obviously playing another three or four weeks. What was that like? I mean, was it almost, I don't want to say like you found a restroom and you got to go to the bathroom, but it was just like a weight had been lifted. <laughs> that, that is a good way to describe it. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, because from, so we won in 2011, so we won the year before that. And then the very next day, we started right back to it, man. That, like, literally the next day? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it wasn't mandatory, but, you know, the, the group of guys that, you know, wanted to win again, there was probably about 30 of us. And, I mean, we started that next day. And, I mean, it, it was just, I mean, super happy, excited. But I, I did have that feeling of, oh, oh man. You know? Yeah, you finally get to breathe a little. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know. We did put a lot of pressure on ourselves, and uh, and we did work very hard to get there. Okay, so now, now talk to me a little bit about this team, because we've talked about it before, and I've spoken to others. How is it that Alabama is able to keep doing this? Like, is it is it start from the top down? I mean, do you guys, do the kids have oh, a mindset? It definitely starts from the top down. I mean, Coach Saban, I think he's the greatest coach ever, you mm -hmm. know, and I'll have that debate with anybody that wants to go there. But um, I think that <clears> – <throat> It's a culture now, you know, like it started with Saban, but it, it's there now in the players, like the seniors, they pass it on to the freshman and sophomore. And then when they work up, they pass it on to the new freshmen and sophomores. And it's just a culture that, I mean, that, that, that's the only way to do it. Is Okay, but, ex but explain, I, I, like, pretend like you're talking to a third grader. Explain me what you mean by a culture. A culture? So, and this is something you learn the, the longer you play, but every team every year has a a, a, a a culture. It's a very unique thing, I'm sure. I mean, no, I know every team has one. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, your high school team has one, and and it's just like kind of like a reputation, if you will. Like, what, what are these guys known for? What are they about? You know, how do they do things? How do they work in the weight room? What kind of discipline do they have? Um, and, and every team's different, you know, and, uh, you know, the Seattle Seahawks, they have a totally different culture than the new England Patriots, you mm -hmm. know, and it's just something that, uh, you know, there's not a right or a wrong, a wrong way. Both of them have won Super Bowls. Um, anyway, but th th that's how I'll explain, you know, a culture, just how certain teams do things. It's, it's kind of like a persona, would you say? Like it's just, yeah. it's their, their aura. Yeah, yeah, just a rep, man, and it changes from year to year. But I think that Saban has has been able to instill that in in every class that comes in, mm -hmm. and and just the leadership that's there, they they just keep that tone going. You know, they they keep the tempo where it is, and I I think that that's why. I mean, yeah, Saban has a huge part of it. 
but I, I think it's the players that have been able to carry that over, you know, for, for, for so long is, is why they are where they are. Got it. So the boss, he, he's got the, he's the boss, but he's got to get the worker to believe in the, he calls it the process and just kind of keep implementing it. And it trickles down. Yeah, well, one thing that Saban always said that <clears throat> really stuck with me is you got to have good leadership. You know, the guys at the top, they have to, you know, set the bar and, you know, do everything they can to, to bring everybody to that bar. But he said you got to have good followership. And that's something that always stuck with me. I like that. Because not everybody's going to be a leader, you know, but you can be a good follower. Just because you're not a leader doesn't mean that you can't be a good follower, you know. And, and that's something that uh, – I mean, you see it all over the place, you know, you know, even though, you know, you're not the, and I think that's what being a long snapper and being a specialist is about really, mm -hmm. if we're not going to go out there and we're not going to make plays, you know, if we do our job a hundred percent perfect, nobody's going to know who we are, yep. but they, a role in the team that I take a lot of pride in, you know, and, uh, I mean, does that make sense? It makes, it makes a thousand bit of sense. I mean, I understand it completely. I just want to make sure everyone that watches this understands as well. I know I ramble a little bit, so you might have to pull me No, back. no, man. You, hey, we, we both can have diarrhea of the mouth all day. You there? Hey, I got you. Yeah, I was getting a phone call. My bad. No worries. All right. Next question about Alabama. Someone wants to know, what is your favorite, or I, I don't even know if you want to say favorite, do you have a memorable Saban butt-chewing story? <laughs> um... I don't think so. I always try to stay out of stay out of his hair a little bit, you know. I never try to get involved with him. Uh, I will say this: I remember one time, um, and all the snappers again, they'll, they'll agree with me on this. But I always try to snap with my pads on. Even now, we'll go out there, helmets and hats, and I'll be out there wearing shoulder pads, and everybody'll make fun of me. But I always, when I'm snapping, I try to have my shoulder pads on. Mm -hmm. And one practice in college, and and this is actually where I learned this, or you know, started doing this where we didn't have to wear shoulder pads, but we had a field goal period. And I get out there, and it's, I mean, it's all mental. It's all in my head. I'm young. And uh, I just, I couldn't snap, man. I couldn't throw the ball back there because I was so used to snapping with my shoulder pads. And uh, it was bad. It was, it was bad. But uh, so he came down on you pretty hard on that one. Oh, uh, because, I mean, he, he didn't say anything. He just came up to me afterwards like, who's shitting your cereal? <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, um, no, nah, but yeah, that's really all I got. It, was, I got you. it wasn't being anything bad. All right, so let's go, let's go to part, part three, basic football questions. One uh, person on Instagram asked me, what age did you start long snapping? Um, I started snapping in middle school. My coach was just like, hey, learn here, learn to snap. You make a good long snapper. And okay. Now, now, now it was like, try to spin it like this, you know? I got you. And uh, I was terrible. I think I snapped with the punter's head every time. I didn't care anything about long snapping. Next next question leads right into it. You, you've obviously been to our Vegas event as a participant way back in the day. Now, yeah. people want to know, when you, you're you obviously an NFL long snapper now, you've gone through college, you've done all that, were you nervous at, I'm reading my little sheet here, were you nervous at the Vegas event? Oh, man, I was so nervous, dude. Uh, because I think that was the first time we met was yep. – uh, the January Vegas because it was cold. Uh, it was probably like Vegas six or something, man. It was so long. <laughs> it was a while back. But uh, yeah, I, I was very nervous because, um, I mean, yeah, I was just like every other high school kid out there. I wanted to play at the next level, and I felt like that was my opportunity. And uh, yeah, I was I was extremely nervous. And now, now when you go back as an instructor and help out in January, you're a legend because you're always in the agility drill, just beating the hell out of kids. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think it's great. I think it, it, it loosens it up and it really eases some tension. It lets people understand. It's football, you know? I, I hear you, Daddy. I'm, I'm in with it. Okay, at, at the end of the day, like that, that that's why I feel like long snappers are a great position because it gives me a chance to, to stay out there playing ball, man, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, play another position, you know? Yeah, nothing personal, but you're not the biggest, the strongest, or the most athletic kid on your team. I'm not the biggest or strongest or most athletic long snapper, man. You know? <laughs> I know yeah. there's, there's some big ones out there. <laughs> Next question. What is the most effective drill that helped you during your years at Alabama during practice? Um, I'd say my footwork drills. 
Because you guys you, in Alabama, you're one of the only schools that has to block. Yeah. So that obviously and, really helped go into the NFL. Oh, yeah, tremendously. Um, but I, I think that that's, you know, the reason I'm here today is because of my ability to block. So, I mean, I got to give – I hate them. I hate my drills, but I got to give a shout-out to my drills, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, I don't know. If you want to make a video, I'll, 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 show, I'll show the drills I do. If, okay. If so. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, I can't do it right now because I'm still rehabbing. But, I got you. Uh, How's rehab going? Going really well, man. I am uh, 13 weeks out of surgery right now. Good. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm. I mean, I'm progressing. You know, uh, as I as I should be. But I mean, I still got a long way to go. You know. When do they think you're going to be back healthy enough to snap? Uh, they said the average is like 10 months. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, to get 100%, you know, they said, you know, here in a little bit, before too long, I'll be about 85%, you know. Okay. And, uh, and I'll be able to run and, you know, do drills and stuff. But uh, to get that 100%, because they said that's where a lot of retears happen is because guys think that they're, you know, they're back. Yeah, man. But they're only about 85. So it's that last few months that, that really separates it. Got it. How many snaps do you take before fourth down? Um. I, I try not to keep it like a routine, if that makes sense, because I don't want to get superstitious. I know a lot of people get superstitious about things. You don't have any superstitions at all? I have my superstitions, but I try not to keep them in my warm-up. So this is the thing. I don't want to say, all right, I got to get, you know, a snap every down, for instance. And then I don't get I don't get a snap every down, and I go out there, and I don't have confidence. Yeah, you freak yourself out. Yeah, so I, I try not to have routines like that. But – I make sure I get good and warmed up before the game, and I um, I make sure that when the offense, so when the defense is out there, I'm sitting on the bench because these games are long, and my legs will get tired. I'll get stiff. I don't like doing that. So when the offense, uh, defense is out there, I'm sitting on the bench. Uh, offense is out there. I, uh, you know, I I do a little, you know, a skill, get my legs going, and make sure that I get a few snaps so I'm good and warm, and uh, I make sure my body feels warm. And then I just kind of throw on the sideline, you know. Got it. Uh, I, I might get a snap on third down. You know, first and second down, I'm usually not snapping. But third down, I might get a snap, you know, get a snap in the set, make sure I feel good. Uh, if I feel good, I'll leave it like that. If um, if uh, if I feel like I need another one, I'll get another one. You so know? Your, 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 your routine is not having a routine? Maybe. I, I might give you that, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, but, uh, I, I mean, I – have a routine, but I, I don't try to get like superstitious about it. God, I got you. I, I try to listen to my body because I mean, the older I get, I mean, I, I, I got to keep myself on a pitch count, you know? I hear you. And, we always say that always. Yeah. I don't want to snap, you know, 500 times because if I snap, I mean, it'd be 500 snaps on Sunday. Oh, I, yeah. That's one of the things I always tell the kids at camp is keep track of, you know, how many snaps you're doing during the game. And I always tell the parents get like one of those club counters, like people walking yeah. into a club. And you'd yeah. be shocked how many snaps a kid will take during, you know, pregame, all that good stuff. So if you like pregame, how many snaps do you take? I probably get probably get thirty pregame. That's good. And probably not there about an hour before. Yeah, because I so our our kickers and punters and kickers they're on a super strict pitch count. So I, I try to just stick with them, and we usually probably get. 10 or 12 kicks going both ways in the stadium before the game. Got it. So, I mean, I'll warm up and then get that. And, and this is another thing that I started doing that I didn't do in college. Um, so, I'll snap and I'll set and then I'll sprint. Like, I'll, I'll get like 20 yards downfield. And, uh, you know, just try to get your body warmed up. You I know, hear feeling. you. But you, you um, should I – mean, even, even in Jacksonville with the humidity and all that, you still got to keep your body loose? Man, I'm getting old, Rubio. <laughs> I got to warm up. Or a warm up now. You know? How old are you right now? Uh, I turned twenty eight yesterday. Oh, you're you're a child. You're a baby. My body feels old though. I, I um, hear you. It's a lot of so squatting yeah. down. Like like before the game, we usually get to the stadium about uh, about three hours before the game, and I've already eaten. Then uh, I go in there, and the first thing I do is I get a hot shower, you know, and I'll just sit in the shower for about ten minutes, and uh, then uh, get out, get stretched, you know, do some push-ups, some sit-ups, you know, some lunges, get my get my muscles loose, and then I'll go out on the field and stretch, and then uh, you know, run a couple laps, get stretched out. Uh, then I'll throw the med ball. I've been throwing the med ball a lot. Got it. Uh, 
I hear you. Yeah. What, okay, so we've got we've gone fourth down routine pregame. Looking at my questions here, what is your routine during the season, like practice wise, and then what about off season? Like how? I, that's a big question. Everyone always says, "Let's let's do off season first, Tinker." How, how many? How often are you snapping off season? Or are you? So, and again, I don't I don't want to mess anybody up. I say, listen to your body. So this you know? is the, yeah. This is the, you're not. This is not a prescription. Yeah, no. You're, you're is, literally just saying this is what Carson Tinker does. Yeah, because I know some people that snap, and, th- and these are pros. I know some pros that snap two or three times a week in the off season. Uh, me, on the other hand, I, I take I take a couple months off, man. Uh, you know, after the season, my body's tired. Uh, I'll, I'll take a few months off, and uh, I start I start snapping. So I snap with the kickers maybe once a month. And then building up into April and getting in the season, I'll start snapping more. I'll start snapping twice a month, and then I'll start going once a week. And then I'll, I'll just progressively work into it. Because that's another thing, too, is, like, there's, like, a snap and shape, you know? I hear you. Know, shape. And so if I don't if I don't snap, you know, say I, I don't snap all off season and I go into, you know, OTAs and I start snapping, uh, I'll be sore, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely have to to have a game plan working myself back into shape so I'm ready for OTAs. Um, but yeah, it's it's good to give your body a break too. You know, you don't yeah. forget how to snap, man. Yeah, you know? it's like riding a bike. I got it. What What's your biggest difference from Alabama to the NFL? Um, I mean, other than like. The obvious things about the NFL, like guys getting cut. And, yeah, you know, it's a business. Uh, I, th- I think just like, uh, and this is not Alabama, this is just college the NFL. Like the attention to detail is so much greater in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Like stuff you wouldn't think about. Like the K-ball, like we meet with our K-ball guy, the, the equipment manager that breaks our balls in. Uh, we, we meet with him once a week and say like, Hey, you know, cause you get, so there's six game balls and, uh, there's three for each team and you get uh, 45 minutes before the game to break in these K balls. And that's something that a lot of people don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, he tries to get one good one. And then another one is, is halfway broken in. Cause it takes about 30 minutes to break in the K ball. Uh, so we'll have like one and a half good balls and hopefully we don't get to the third one cause it hadn't been touched and it's stiff and it's, uh, yeah, gotta be so, slick. Yeah, um, yeah, but so like we meet with him once a week. Hey, this this ball was good. You need to work on this a little more. Blah blah blah. Because like the kickers like their ball a certain way, the punters like their ball a certain way, and the snappers like their ball a certain way. So we all gotta have to come to an agreement on what what the perfect ball is, and then try to get him to do that. You know. So like when I go out there, I'm expecting like uh, I'm expecting to know exactly how that football feels when I go to snap it. Yeah. And, and that's just something in college, like you never would even think about, you know. No, absolutely. In, in high school, not even close. I practice with our footballs every single day, so when I go out there and it's a game-winning field goal, I have full confidence and I know how that ball is going to react. You know. Got it. Got it. Okay. It's little little details like that that you know you never see in college, okay. and uh, yeah. So I, I think that just little a little attention to detail and, and everything uh, is 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 the biggest difference. Number the sixth basic football question I have: Who's the scariest person you ever played against, and why? Um. And then I don't, I don't really try to like, you know, look across the line, uh, and you know, try to make it like I just try to do my job and may the best guy win, you know. Gotcha. So, but if I had to say like Nadam can sue, <laughs> he he hit me pretty hard one time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, that, I mean, because, like, yeah, you get hit. But this guy, I mean, he, that, that, that was one of the hardest hits because he was just sitting right across. And then, I mean, I don't know how he got so much momentum so fast. But, um, yeah, he, he's a pretty scary guy, though. What, what about on your own, own team that you've ever played with, either at Alabama or in Jacksonville? Like a guy you're like, if I'm walking down a dark alley, this is the guy that I want with me. Um... I'd probably say Chris Clemens. He was a he was a mean dude. I mean, he was he was a pretty scary guy. Chris Clemens. I don't know who that is. He was with Seattle when they won the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. I I, I know long snappers. 
<laughs> yeah, he was a, he's a he's a pass rusher. Okay. Uh, he's not the biggest guy or anything like that, but like he's a he's a bad dude. I got you. I got you. What's the most nervous you've ever been in a game? Um, probably. You got to have a couple national championship games, first NFL game. Never got close though. I mean, like not bragging. But the, t- the tide was rolling. Yeah, they, I mean, it was it wasn't like a game winner or anything. Um, I'd say one that's really coming to mind is I mean I, I've had a couple of big game snaps, but one that's really coming to mind is 2010. So I was uh, this is my first year starting at Alabama. My third year there because I was registered. So my first year starting, and we were at Florida, okay. and it was it was still pretty uh, like early in the season. Uh, I mean, Florida was a good team. It was it was after Tebow and all that, but they were still a good team. Urban Meyer was still there. Um, and, Thousand and, degrees. Yeah, well, people still thought it was a good rivalry too. Mm-hmm. You know, if Alabama played Florida, like no offense right now, it wouldn't be that big of a game. But this was a huge game. Um, and they score on the first play. So it's 7 nothing right off the bat. And we have a slow drive, and we kind of stall out about the 30-yard line, and we have to go out there and kick a field goal. And, I mean, that stadium was rolling. It was loud. And I remember I felt like I could feel my shoulder pads. like Your, your heart? Moving with my heartbeat, yeah. yeah. Um, and we went out there and, uh, you know, had a good snap. And Jeremy, uh, he, he hit the field goal, Jeremy Shelley, so – uh, I mean that, that was a cool, and that I mean that shut them up, man. It it the whole stadium went quiet, and right. uh, yeah, I was nervous for that one though, because I mean that was that was a lot. That was that was so loud, man. I got you. So hey, loud. What what do coaches expect from you at the NFL level, especially when first coming into training camp? This is another question I got. Um, I would assume well, just perfection. Yeah, I would say yeah. Now perfection. Um, and I think. I'll get to the coaches, but I think you have to expect more out of yourself. Like I, I have, I have the highest expectations for me, you know? Um, but in terms of coaches, yeah, perfection. Now is perfection. Uh, and I think, I think they expect more and more every year you're in the league. So this is my fifth year now. And I mean, I, 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 all my field goal snaps, I want them all to look the same, you know, because we have the same camera angle and stuff mm-hmm. up and around. And I, I don't want you to tell a difference in my field goal snaps, you know. I, I want it right here on his elbow, laces. Like, you, you should never have to see him move it. Um, on, on punt, I don't expect him to have to, like, work way one way or the other. If he's going left, he wants the ball in the middle. If he's going right, he wants it on his right hip, mm-hmm. like, no questions asked. That's where it should be. Got it. Um, uh, so in terms of snapping, in terms of protection, you know, no errors in protection. Uh, that's a little harder to do because, I mean, those are grown men trying to block that punt. But in, in terms of snapping, th- there should be no – nothing but being perfect. Um, okay, no, no. This – this you, you, got, you, hit it, you hit it perfectly, man. Um, this has been – League, though, like realistically, they expect you to be able to protect. Yeah. You know. Like, like the snaps would never be an issue and you should be able to protect. So, gotcha. I mean, there's a little bit of leniency as a rookie because, you know, you don't know, you don't know anything when you're a rookie. Yeah. You're looking at but uh, they, they do expect that. Okay. This has been fantastic. I, I mean, I'm, I'm learning a lot. I know everyone's going to be watching. He's going to be learning a lot. I, I, I want to end, and obviously I really thank you for your time. I know you're busy, busy, busy. Uh I, I want to end with a quote that you always say. I hear you say it all the time. I've been, I had some of my holster saving it. And I want you to kind of go through it because you've kind of been hitting on it, hit and miss all, all this whole entire last 34 minutes. You've been hitting on it, but I want you to explain it because I know I think it's almost like your mantra, if you will. Okay, here's the statement. Well, what the quote might be, man. Uh, no, it's, it's a good one. Don't worry. You, <laughs> you, you say this all the time. Okay, ready? Here it is. I want you to explain it to everybody. You always tell everybody. I, I hear you work with. You always say, "Get your mind right." Okay, um, talk, talk about it. What do you What do you mean by that? Because you, I, I hear, I've heard you yell that a billion times in Vegas. Uh, so I think that you know, get your mind right. It just means like I, I think it all starts up here. You know, with, with anything, you can go 
and you can be the most God-given, you know, athletic ability uh, guy out there. And if, if you don't have it up here, then, then you ain't got it. You know, I think it all starts up here. I think that, I mean, cause at our position, especially consistency is the biggest thing. Absolutely. And, um, I, I, it's all up here, you know, it's, it's all about your focus and your attention to detail. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's very easy to get distracted. So okay, now, now you're, you're a very mentally strong person. You've been strong ever since you were, you know, Murphy, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Now it, it, through Alabama here, can you feel like you, not you, but I'm saying can, can being mentally strong be taught to someone? Oh, so no, it, it is nothing but being taught. Um, it, it, it's not anything about, you know, athletic ability. It's all about, you know, effort and mental toughness. And, um, and, and I, I learned all this in college. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, th this is, this is where it comes from, uh, which is another reason why I think Alabama is, is so dominant right now. Um, yeah, but it, it all starts with just want to, you know, you, you gotta want it. And I mean, that, that, that goes for any, any of the high school guys listening, you know, you want to play at that next level. So do a thousand other kids, you know, but you can want it more than them. You know, you can outwork them. And um, it, it, that's where it all starts, though, you know, is, is, you know, getting up, getting up early and putting the work in, you know. Yeah, you, you've got like I was talking to Reed Ferguson for the Bills about it, too. And because I know this is a big problem with a lot of the high school kids and middle school kids is they don't have time. Well, you, you have the same 24 hours that someone else does. I mean, what do they mean they don't have time, man? Yeah. Like. They don't have time. They don't have time to get some drills in. Just got to wake up earlier. I mean, and dude, so like, honestly, this is where I got good at long snapping, man. So in my high school, my sophomore year, all I did was snap. You know, mm -hmm. we had, uh, they had me a defensive tackle. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I ended up moving to offensive line, which I do. I do advocate playing other positions as a long snapper. Mm -hmm. uh, played offensive line. It taught me, taught me a lot of good things. But uh, so my sophomore year, all I did was snap, you know. And I sat over there when a lot of guys were probably sitting on the bench being like, man, you know, what are we doing this weekend? Blah, 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 whatever. And I was, I was doing drills, man. I was doing all the drills that you taught me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I was just snapping, man. And, th and that's where I feel like I learned how to snap was just doing those drills and figure out what worked and what didn't. So, I mean, th there's always time, man. Having, not, having no time, that, that's no excuse. No, I hear you. I hear you. I Take it. Huh? On soapbox, my bad, man. No, nah, dude, I loved it. I loved it. Hey, Tinker, thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck uh, healing properly. Give your wife a big hug and uh, um, make sure that baby starts wearing that Rubio long snappy gear right off the bat. Yeah, here for you, man. Hey, that's going to look good. A little <laughs> hootie. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on this, dude. Not a problem, man. Take care, Tinker. Vegas. Huh? I said I'll see everybody in Vegas. Get your mind right. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Take care.